Welcome to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. <laughs> Dell challenges the status quo, questions everything, and empowers you to return to your core beliefs to make your life better. If you're ready to hear the truth and get your roadmap to the lifestyle you really want, the next hour will change your life. And now, your host, self-made millionaire, national award-winning investor of the year, CEO and founder of Lifestyles Unlimited, Del Wamsley. Welcome to the Del Wamsley Radio Show, where the hype ends and the help begins. I'm your host, Del Wamsley, and as always, we're working on your financial freedom. My friends, uh, I've noticed over the years and years and years of history that uh, I've looked at what I call edutainment, which is entertainment slash there should be some education in it somewhere, type media. Uh, I found that some of the best edutainment media, most commonly used edutainment media is used for our kids. And ever since the beginning of time, parents have used stories. And in the Bible, they call them parables. I think that learning by parable is probably the easiest way to learn something and retain it because you can remember the story much easier than you can remember the theory behind the story. But the story will remind you of the theory. And so I think it's very important what parables you teach your children. I also think it's very important what parables you listen to as adults. And I do believe we listen to parables every day. And if you think about when the political people get up on stage and they talk about, look, here's little Willa Johnson. Little Willa Johnson lost her job and welfare came in and saved her. And and they got this and they got that. And and, and they go through a sales pitch for whatever it is they're trying to sell. And every time there's a a State of the Union, whether Republican or Democrat, they bring on all these people and they celebrate their existence, right? And they tell their story. It's a parable. That's plain and simple what it is. It's a parable. It's a nursery rhyme for adults. That's what a parable is. It's a nursery rhyme for adults. And one of the greatest books I've ever read is called um, The Richest Man in Babylon, which is about 15 parables that teach you just about everything you need to know about money. So if you have not read The Richest Man in Babylon, you need to get out there and read this book. I guarantee you, easy reading, fast reading, great stuff. Right. And once you've read it for yourself, then you have any common sense at all. You'll immediately turn around and have a family powwow and read it to your entire family because it's that good. I mean, it really is. And so today I wanted to talk about parables and I wanted to give you an example of a typical parable and how it gets hijacked. And once parables get hijacked, then how they change the way people think about things. Then what I want to do is I'm going to show you how I have hijacked parables of my own and change them to do what I want them to do. So as to give you an example how you can change and the the parables that you share with your children, your family, your friends, and so forth. So today that's really where we're going because it's the, the idea is that there's a theory on the other side of the parable. The story is to get you there. But what I want you to understand is sometimes the story has a parable that you didn't even realize was in the parable. And or you have to realize that in this day and age, they're changing history and changing parables because right now, and I don't know enough about this to give you accurate information, but I know you've heard as well as I have that they are changing, rewriting history books in our schools and they're changing who is important, who was a hero, who wasn't, so on and so on and so on. And I'll tell you, I don't really care that much about that. Uh, as I do about what they're telling people about today. For example, I think that there's there's going to be some parables out there that say that, you know, these people found Columbus, found America, and then uh, Lewis and Clark conquered America. And then there's going to be people on the other side that said they killed all these Indians, they killed off all the animals, they did all these negative things, right? So you got two sides of that story, and both of which are probably true. Right. There's a truth in both sides of that story. It's just on which side you want to present in our schools right now. They're controlled by liberal teachers. So they want to change it from the conservative view, the country based view, the success of America, the proud America view to the other side, which is the I hate America view. In fact, a guy sent me an article today that I just didn't want to put on. I read it and it was good. He said it's the best email he's ever gotten, blah, blah, blah. And I read it and I go, this just isn't going anywhere because for that very point that there's two sides to every story. And so what it basically came down to was about he was talking about how football players 
are completely ignorant adults that have absolutely no point of view that means anything to anybody. That you wouldn't go to your plumber to find out about brain surgery. You would not go to your, your brain surgeon to find out about plumbing. And you wouldn't go to a pro football player to look into politics and the way the world works because they have no political science, no political information, no politi- actually no information at all because 99% of them are illiterate. And that's probably an over-exaggeration, but have you ever heard any of them speak? I mean, come on. These are not the sharpest blades in the drawer. But they get paid millions and millions, tens and hundreds of millions of dollars to go out there and be a show. They're entertainment for the rest of us. Just because they're entertainment. Example, I wouldn't go to the jockey in a race and and ask him how to vote. I wouldn't go to a dog trainer and ask them how to do set up the the finances for the country. And so the whole point of view is these people have no relevance to be on a national stage saying anything about politics. They're there at the behest and the whim of the people watching them. And that they're they're saying that they're disrespecting the whole country by kneeling. And I'm thinking to myself, okay, I understand what you're saying, I understand what you're feeling, but here's what I see on the other side of the parable. The other side of the parable is a bunch of stupid people kneeling. And if you think they're that stupid, then them kneeling shouldn't bother you at all because I see a bunch of stupid people kneeling. Because they're stupid because that's not going to do anything. Kneeling isn't going to do anything except irritate people. And that's what they want to do is irritate you. And if you don't let them irritate you, then they're just stupid people kneeling to get paid a lot of money. A lot of really rich, stupid people kneeling. Right? So I would say also if you don't really like it, it's real simple. Just stop watching the sport. And quite honestly, I stop watching sports. I don't think I've watched any sports at all. Zero sports. Because it's just ridiculous. There's no need to. And now when they put it back on again, you say, well, you'll watch it then. Yes, I will. I'll watch one thing, basketball. Baseball puts me to sleep. Golf puts me to sleep. I call golf and baseball a process of watching grass grow. It's so slow and so boring. There's absolutely no reason to spend my life doing it. Football, it's in the middle there. And they're changing it. Football used to be cool because people beat the kabungies out of each other. And it was who was the biggest, strongest, fastest, and smartest on the field. Now it's like, oh, my God, who knows what it is? Probably the same, but it's hard to tell because they don't have they have all these rules. Now they're changing to change football. So say la vie, that's really not important. Again, all of that is just parable. It's parable speak for something. I'm trying to get this point across is that all of this, this whole online TV radio genre of people talking at you is just terrible. It's just them trying to put a story in your head that you'll remember that it changed the way you think. So the point is, why don't you control the parable? And or here's another way to say it. He who controls the parable controls the people. And as you see in our schools right now, the liberal leftists control the media and they control education And so everywhere where people go to get information, which is education and media, is controlled by the left. And so what message are you getting? You're getting a sandwich of left on left mixed in the middle with a little left. And so your brain is slowly turning to mush, slowly turning to where you feel politically inclined. You have to be politically correct. You would have tried to pull the stuff they're pulling right now 10 years ago and people would have got up and just shouted them down. And there's the same number of white and black and Mexican people as there was white and black and Mexican people before. It's just people have become politically correct. They've been scared into it. Oh, my God, if I don't do the right thing, then they'll send people to shut my business down or they'll they'll get me kicked off the air and blah, blah, blah. And they will. That's their power they're using now because they're not the minority anymore. They're the majority. And so they use the majority to control the message. Wow. Here's where I'm going with this. Believe it or not, the message that comes out of your mouth is the message that goes back into your head. And whatever you get up every day and tell yourself, that's what is reality to you. So if I get up every day and tell myself, man, I'm a good-looking, healthy, excited individual looking forward to life, then that's the way life's going to treat me. If I get up and go, man, I'm old, I'm tired, I'm worn out, there's nothing left, that's the way life is going to treat me. We'll take a short break. Be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show. My friends, how many of you out there right now believe you have a plan? I 
followed the conventional plan for years, and then the conventional plan blew up in my face. I wonder how many of you can relate to that exact same thing. The real question is how many of you have actually figured out how to turn that thing around and make it happen. Do you have a plan? Lifestyles Unlimited has one for you. It's worked for countless others. Retire in five years or less. Come learn more. Join us for our live online workshop. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Welcome back. Now here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio. Today we're talking about fairy tales and parables and stories and cartoons and all the things that the media and the left are trying to use to control and manipulate your way of thought and where they're taking you and how it's leading you down a path to wanting to be a totally controlled, totally out of self-control person. They want you to believe that you need them to survive. And I've got a little parable here that has been around for ages. And I've got two versions of it. I've got the uh, original version, and then I've got the new, more up-to-date version. So it goes something like this. The old version says, The ant and the grasshopper. The ant works hard in the withering heat all summer long, building his house and laying up supplies for the winter. The grasshopper thinks the ant is a fool and laughs and dances and plays the summer away. Come winter, the ant is warm and well-fed. The grasshopper has no food or shelter, so he dies out in the cold. Moral of the old story, be responsible for yourself. Okay? So let's think about that. In the old version, is there time to go out and riot? No. Is there time to become a drug addict? No. Is there time just to be a goof-off? No. Bottom line, nose to the grindstone, make sure you provide for yourself, save for a rainy day, You've heard all the sayings, right? You know what was taught during our generation, our parents' generation, and their generations before them. This is a self-sufficient lifestyle. And that's the way people wanted you to believe success came. It came from being the ant, not the grasshopper. Well, here's the more modern version, so to speak. Let me read this to you. It says, The ant works hard in the withering heat and the rain all summer long, building his house and laying up supplies for the winter. The grasshopper thinks the ant is a fool and laughs and dances and plays away the summer. That's our kids down in Miami, Florida, down all these different beaches, getting sick, spreading COVID, doing nothing, playing and parting away because they feel no need to worry about the future. It's all the other welfare people that aren't doing anything except just going out and protesting because they're not getting enough welfare, that they want more welfare because there's, you know, when you're living on welfare, there's never enough. You always need more welfare and there's never going to improve your situation because it can't get you off of welfare. By being a better welfarian, you don't get to have a higher welfare check. You have to be a worse welfarian, which means get more pregnant, have more babies, become poorer, fall into a lower class version of yourself, right? So we move on. The shivering grasshopper calls a press conference and demands to know why the ant should be allowed to be warm and well-fed while he is cold and starving. There it goes, friends. It starts with the liberal press. The allowability for these people to bring their cause to front and to fake like their cause is important. That's what the liberal press is doing to you. They're giving them a place to stand and make their case. And we're creatures of habit that we believe if it's important enough to get on the national news, then it's probably right. There's some reverence behind it. And when all of the announcers on these liberal left stations give it credence, it gives it power and it spreads it. So now a grasshopper slash the unsuccessful, non-productive, and this is a very important word, non-productive individuals in our society are getting a voice and they are destroying our world. It goes on and says, goes on and says, come the winter, the, the shivering grasshopper calls a press conference and demands to know why the ant should be allowed to be warm and well-fed while he is cold and starving. CBS, NBC, PBS, CNN, and ABC show up to provide pictures of the shivering grasshopper 
And boy, they always do. They show you, you know, if it bleeds, it leads, right? That's always the way press works. Next to a video of an ant in his comfortable home with a table filled with food. America is stunned by the sharp contrast. How can this be that in a country of such wealth, this poor grasshopper is allowed to suffer so? Kermit the Frog appears on Oprah with the grasshopper. Now think about this. Here comes all the all the race baiters. The race baiters are out there, and the only way they make money is to get on national news where they get attention, and they get on there by finding other people's causes, right? So Kermit the Frog, green, appears with Oprah, black, with the grasshopper, green, and everybody cries when they say, it's not easy being green. Occupy the Ant Hill stages a demonstration in front of the Ant's house, where the news stations film the Black Lives Matter group singing, We Shall Overcome. So now all the colors, whether you're green, you're red, you're brown, you're going to come in, you're going to use this as a chance to push your agenda. Then Reverend Al Sharpton, another race baiter, shows up and has the group kneel down to pray for the grasshopper. While he damns the ant, he later appears on MSNBC to complain that rich people do not care. Former President Obama condemns the ant and blames Donald Trump President Bush, 43, President Bush, 41, President Reagan, Christopher Columbus, and the Pope for the grasshopper's plight. Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer explain in an interview on The View that the ant has gotten rich off the backs of the grasshopper. Boy, don't they always say that? The man has gotten rich off of the others. And both call for an immediate tax hike on the ant to make him pay his fair share. There we go. You let these people get in power this next election, they're going to hike your taxes back up to 95%, which they were when the Democrats ran it and held all power for all three offices. Finally, the EEOC drafts an Economic Equity and Anti-Grasshopper Act. Retroactive to the beginning of the summer. So now they're passing laws that are retroactive. And by the way, they do this stupid stuff. Obama did this all the time, where he retroactively made something illegal, so you had already done it, so you're already guilty. The ant is fined for failing to hire the proportionate number of green bugs, and having nothing left to pay his retroactive taxes, his home is confiscated by the government green czar. We'll be right back with the Del Wamsley Radio Show to finish this. Unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to Del Wamsley Radio Show. As we went to break, we're talking about the uh, ant and the grasshopper story, and we were doing the new updated coronavirus version. And um, we'll pick it back up where the governor's decided that the grasshopper was unfairly treated and the ant needs to be taxed completely out of his mind till he has nothing left. And then finally to get him to make sure he goes down, finally uh, the EEOC drafts an Economic Equity and Anti-Grasshopper Act retroactively to the beginning of the summer, which means that everything the ant made uh, has stolen from the grasshopper because he didn't hire enough grasshoppers. The ant is fined for failing to hire a proportionate number of green bugs and having nothing left to pay as retroactively taxes. His home was confiscated by the government green czar, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and is given to the grasshopper. You realize that's what uh, Ocasio-Cortez wants to do, right? She wants to take rental properties away from owners of rental properties and give them to the tenants. Guys, only, only in reality could something be so crazy. Nobody could say this and get away with this 10, 20 years ago without being lynched. 
<laughs> and you say, well, Dell, I want to take you away. You're advocating lynching. No, I'm not advocating it. I'm just telling you the truth. I mean, this woman is saying stuff that years ago would have got her killed. And now you're just loving her and you're voting her in. I don't know who it is in that state that's voting her in, but that state's got some wacko people. They're the ones getting rid of all the police, too, I think. My gosh, what are these people drinking? What are they on? Goes on and says, the story ends as we see the grasshopper and his free loading friends finish up the last bits of the ant's food uh, while the government house he is in, which, as you recall, just happened to be the ant's old house, crumbles around them because the grasshopper doesn't maintain it. And they don't maintain anything. Go to parts of the country where the Democrats control and look at the housing. It's not maintained. The whole areas are slums. It goes on and says, the ant has disappeared in the snow, never to be seen again. The grasshopper is found dead in a drug-related incident, and the house now abandoned is taken over by a gang of spiders who terrorize and ramshackle once prosperous and peaceful neighborhood. The entire nation collapses, bringing the rest of the free world with it. Moral of the story, be careful how you vote in 2020. I've sent this to you because I believe that you're an ant and not a grasshopper. Ooh, man, you got to think about that, huh? That's unbelievable. You know what's unbelievable is about the stupid story is probably true. I mean, for it to be that painful to listen to, there has to be kernels of truth throughout the entire thing. And you know there is. And yet, you're not going to go rally every person that you know to go vote against that kind of tyranny? You're just going to sit back. But I know that that's okay for you because you've sat back and let yourself be poor and middle class and run on the little rounds, wire in circles and circles and circles and circles, living in a cubicle, living a life of quiet desperation. That's been your whole life because you just won't fight back. And at some point in life, if you really want life to have a higher quality, you have to fight back. And we talk about this in a financial means. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a financial parable. And it's the goose that laid the golden egg. So the goose that laid the golden egg parable uh, goes something like this. It says a guy found that one of his geese laid golden eggs, and he really couldn't believe it, so he took it down to the jeweler in the, in the city or town there, nearby, and the jeweler you know, declared it, yes, this is gold. And so the guy was so happy, he went down to the, the bar, and because he'd had such a, a massive windfall, he went down to the bar, and turned the gold in and bought drinks for everybody and celebrated and was a very, very, at the point, important person in town because he was spending money everywhere. He was becoming important by spending money. So he goes back to the farm and looks for the, you know, the goose to lay another golden egg, thinking that now he's got this lifetime of income, right? So he waits and waits and waits and waits and waits and waits and waits. And finally, he gets upset and he starts yelling at the goose and hitting the goose. And I think the goose might have had one more golden egg. And he went back to town and spent that golden egg, too, and became important. But finally, he had worn the goose out so bad that the goose just didn't have it in to lay golden eggs anymore. And, you know, he stopped feeding it. You know, he's gone all the time. You know, farmer gets up every day at 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock in the morning, feeds their animals and takes care of their business. But this farmer was out partying every day for a month on end with all this money he had now. And so no one took care of the goose, and the goose got sick, and it it got tired, and it got hungry and starved and was losing feathers. And finally, you know, he gets so upset the goose doesn't have enough energy to, to, to lay eggs. What does he do? He opens the goose up. He cuts it open thinking there's a, a tummy full of golden eggs. And he finds there's nothing in there and kills the goose. Killed the goose that laid the golden eggs. That is the reality of the impetuousness of the type of people that we were just talking about in the last parable. These people want something for nothing and they want it now. Do you believe that? Something for nothing and they want it now. Now, I saw on TV today this morning there was a, a city in North Carolina or the state of North Carolina wanted to who just approved reparations for slaves. There hasn't been slavery in 100 years. Maybe 150. I don't actually know when it actually ended, but it's a long time ago. And none of the people that are alive today, none of us did any of that to any of them. And yet they expect us to pay reparations to them for what we didn't do to them because they want something for nothing and they want it now. 
So I'm going to tell you an alternate version of the goose that lays the golden egg. Same story. Farmer finds the goose, excited, takes the egg down to town, finds out it's real gold, cashes it in, and starts to party and parties and parties and parties. And comes back and, you know, the goose hasn't been fed and taken care of and he's sickly and he's irritated about it. The difference in the story is that the guy says, well, if nothing else, I'm just going to get rid of the stupid goose. And so there's a guy in town that had heard about the golden goose. His name was Del Wamsley. And Del Wamsley was into raising flocks of animals and herds of animals. He realized something the guy didn't is that the problem with his goose was that he wasn't taking care of his goose anymore. So Del Wamsley offered him a healthy price for the goose and bought the goose. And he took him over and he started feeding him and cleaning him and make sure he had a good place to live and gave him a lot of attention. And the goose started laying golden eggs. But Dell, instead of taking the golden eggs down to town and cashing them, Dell let the goose sit on the eggs. And what happened is they hatched. They hatched into new geese that laid golden eggs. And pretty soon Dell had a whole flock of geese. A whole flock of geese. And man, he started looking into supplementation and diets and exercise programs and had doctors and people to take care of them and special everything. Those geese got every kind of physical, psychological benefit they could. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, these, these geese were just laying eggs like you wouldn't believe. And he was sitting back and getting richer and richer and richer and more and more and more geese. And then one day he realized he had so many geese that he was up to his neck. He had to feed them and take care of them, and it was work. It was like when I had one house, 10 houses, 50 houses, 100 houses, then all of a sudden you have 100 houses to take care of. Well, all of a sudden this guy had hundreds of geese to take care of, and it became a job. Now, he's wealthy, don't get me wrong, but he now had a job. And so he had to decide what to do. What do I do at this point that I have a very successful business, I make a lot of money, But where do I go from there? And we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, I'm going to explain to you what this farmer Dell, farmer in the Dell, Wamsley did to change his position in the marketplace. We'll be right back with the Dell Wamsley Radio Show. talks about buying your way back from corporate America through real estate. A massive change in my life. My personal residence I lived in was a one-bedroom condo, cost 425 bucks a month. This covered it. My automobile car payment was only 300 and some dollars a month. This covered it. I was buying my way back from corporate America. I could feel it. Lifestyles Unlimited will teach you how to buy your way back from corporate America. Get in control. Get into our live online free workshop. Register at lifestylesunlimitedworkshop.com. Welcome back. Now, here's some more unconventional wisdom to set you free from the man on a mission to retire America, one person at a time, Del Wamsley. Welcome back to the last segment of Del Wamsley Radio Show. We've been following along with parables today, and we're doing the farmer in the Del Wamsley story. I call it Farmer in the Dell. And uh, we're at the point where uh, Farmer Dell has got himself a flock of geese, very healthy, well-maintained, best product, best price geese that are putting out the eggs left and right. And he's got an incredible life, except he's got this job. He's got to get up at 5, 6 o'clock every morning and go take care of the geese. Now, I told you a story the other day about a, a neighbor I have who is a very successful, highly successful financial person who gets up at 3 o'clock in the morning every day and goes to their donut stores and makes donuts. And they own multiple donut stores. They own franchises. And But the thing is, they get up at 3 o'clock in the morning to go make donuts at 50, no, I think 65 years of age or so. I mean, that's awful old to be getting at 3 o'clock in the morning and making donuts. And like myself, I have a hard time getting out of bed by 10. My wife doesn't get up to 11 or 12. And, uh, you know, we just, it's different. 
when you don't have a job. And these people have jobs. And so here it was the farmer Dell, farmer Dell as a uh, farmer Dell has all these geese and he's working, he's figured it out. There's got to be some better way. So he goes to this seminar. It's a crazy seminar put on a, by a company called Lifestyles Unlimited. And Lifestyles Unlimited, he goes there and says, you can have passive streams of income. You don't have to work. And they start out by talking about having geese and you no longer have to have a job because you've got ge- income coming from geese and they're calling that self-employed. And they're saying that's the first step. So the second step, though, is to be own a business. And the business is anything where you can look at the org chart and realize that you're not on it. You don't have a job. And so he listened, he learned, he signed up and got help, got a mentor. And the mentor showed him how to get into, yes, cows, cattle. So what's the difference between geese and cows? Like, what's the difference between a house and an apartment? The difference is cows graze. You put them out in the field and you leave them. And they eat and they walk around and they eat and they lay down and they walk around and they eat. In addition to that, when you have a ranch and you have cattle, you have an employee. You have a cowboy or two that takes care of the ranch. So if they need to put some hay in the field, you pay the cowboy. They put the hay in the field. You don't get up and go put hay in the field and you don't get on a horse and rouse cattle around. You now are a ranch owner. You're now actually a business owner owner. And you can own a ranch in Montana and you can live in Texas. You can own a ranch in Texas and live in Florida. You can live where you want and own your business where you want because you don't get up every day and go to work in your business. The next thing you have to understand is that instead of geese coming out of there, you have a milk source. And so you milk this cattle, milk them and milk them and milk them. Now, the only way you can keep milking them and get good milk is to Take care of them. Best product, best price. You have to maintain your cattle very, very healthy. When a cow has another cow, when it calves, when it breeds, the thing that comes out the other side is huge. It's a giant new cow. And when I'm saying you own an apartment complex and you've owned it long enough and it's gained enough equity that you can refinance that equity out tax-free and go buy another apartment complex, you go from 10000 a month in cash flow from one to 20000 a month in cash flow for two, or you sell the one and you buy one twice the size and go from 10000 to 20000 a month. And you can keep doing that year after year after year. And so five years into the system, you might be making $50,000 a month. Ten years into the system, you might be making $100,000 a month. I know I had three apartment complexes that I bought. Very inexpensively because it was a long time ago. It's very cheap. And uh, they were each making me $15,000 a month in cash flow. So it's $45,000 a month out of three. So what did I do after that? I went and bought two more. And that was making me so much money then that I didn't know what to do with it. I promised I'd go waste the money. And I started doing crazy stuff like buying dinner for everybody who would hang out with me and food and drinks everywhere I went and driving the most expensive car I could drive and buying a million-dollar mansion. I still couldn't spend all the money. But you know what I did after that? I sold those two and bought five more. You know, you just sit back and you think, well, how did you do that? Because I stopped dealing in geese and started dealing in cows. If you get the metaphor, I stopped dealing in houses and started dealing in apartment complexes. Bigger and easier to maintain. You go, well, why? I would think bigger would be harder to maintain. No, bigger can be better. Bigger can be easier. Because if there's enough money involved in the process, there's enough money to hire somebody to do the work. And when you have $10 million wrapped up in one apartment complex instead of $10 million wrapped up in 200 houses, you're not spread out all over the place. I mean, one big giant cow is easy to take care of compared to 100 little geese that you've got to get them where you want them. You've got to feed them every single day, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So my story, I stand by it. Living now with six apartment complexes, as owner of six apartment complexes, is one-tenth as hard as it was to take care of 100 100 houses, which I had over 100 houses right around that. So, you know, it was one-tenth as hard as far as time involved and as it was then. So there's the parable. We've given you some things to look at today, and you can turn your life into the parable. You can live the parable of your dream. You just have to pick which parable you want to live. Do you want to pick the parable of Casio Ortez or whatever her name is? Uh, The parable of the far, far left and be on welfare and have people take care of you? Because you can't. You vote them in. They're going to give you some free stuff. I guarantee you. 
But if you have anything and you're willing to work and you want to get ahead, they're going to take away the ability for you to get ahead by taking what you produce. Because the reality is the difference between the left and the right is the left are the people that do not produce anything worthwhile in our society. Name it compared to the people who do produce positive in our society. Otherwise, the left wouldn't have to take from the right to give to the left. And remember, it's not just money. It's the quality of the lifestyle. That's what they really want from us. Thank you for listening to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show, teaching you the opposite of everything you've been taught so you can obtain the results you've never obtained. Join us seven days a week. Can't get enough? Visit DellOnTheRadio.com to listen to the Dell Wamsley Radio Show, access past your podcasts, and join the conversation. The information and opinions you hear on the Del Wamsley Radio Show are those of the host, Del Wamsley, his guests, and his callers, and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of this station, its affiliates, its management, or advertisers. The Del Wamsley Show is for entertainment purposes only. Please consult a professional regarding your personal investment needs. Nothing presented on the Del Wamsley Show constitutes an endorsement, recommendation, offer, or solicitation to buy or sell any product or security.